you know, I've been thinking about doing videos like this for quite some time. And I just never seem to get the discipline. To... And what I found is my style of video has been just sort of a random documentation of life. I don't really have any specific goal. I'm just kind of sharing things as I go through them, whether it's repair or cutting down a tree or whatever it is. So I have this archive of video spanning back to 2013 or so. But if I wanted to go find in that pile of stuff just a simple video about doing simple techniques like a brake clean test, I can't do it because they're buried in all these other videos with all these other subjects. Because what was important to me at the time was usually just something completely different. And brake clean was just one of those things I happened to do along the way as I was trying to solve a problem or test a fix. Being frustrated because I tried to find something about brake clean, I decided that maybe I should go back and try to call through some of that stuff and then come up with a little more focused and simple video about the specific techniques that might be of interest to people on a given day on a given topic. This one is my first. And it'll be brake clean. And I use this stuff all the time. I use it to test the existing saws, even if they don't have a problem, to see if I can catch things before they uh, turn catastrophic, especially with my, well, I'm not going to go there. And you will notice that those saws that I'm not going to talk about, <laughs> where I spent a lot of time changing bearings, are not going to show up in this video, not uh, overtly, but maybe covertly. But the subject is brake clean, and it's a very, very inexpensive tool that if you have it in your repertoire, you can both avoid catastrophic failure by checking things and catching issues as they develop, and it's a very valuable diagnostic tool. And what it finds is air leaks, and specifically air leaks into the crankcase of a, of a two-stroke. Now, with a single cylinder two-stroke, like a chainsaw, you get a leak in the crank seal or something like that because the bearing failed and wobbled out the, the seal. Brake clean will shut it right off right now. Or like an intake boot or a blown base gasket or a decomp. You know, let's say the decomp is failing. Brake clean would find something like that instantly. Back to the subject at hand, I want to show the fastest and easiest way to figure out what's, a, what's going on with a 390 when it goes lean. So what we're going to do is get it fired up if I can, and then a can of brake clean is all I really need. Stopping that quickly, when I shot the brake clean right underneath the manifold, it's one of two things. It's either the boot's ripped, which is fairly common, or it blew a base gasket out the bottom, which I've seen as well, and I really don't know which one it is yet. That's a good sign, right?
There you go. Guess what we have? We have a project. Let me show you that again. If I can stall a saw that fast uh, with brake clean in the PTO side, chances are it's got a bearing failure. So, try it again. That's about as definitive as you can get. That diagnosis took us, what, minutes? And had the saw come in, I'd done that to begin with, it would have taken seconds. And, uh, but we sure know we have an air leak. Now we have to define where the air leak is. And we do know that it's underneath the oil pump. So it's either the bearing or the seal. Let's just hope it's a seal. I don't see any movement in the crank, so there's a good chance it's just the the seal, not the whole bearing. Let's let's go with that. By the way, you can get the radial seal for these separately. They don't have to be a whole bearing assembly because, like with a 575, you know the old C H I T happens. So this saw right here came, and it would not run. I mean, it would not even make a pop. So usually, even if it has a leak. It'll make a pop and run for a couple of revolutions, you know what I'm saying? And then it'll kind of like over rev and um, run on, stuff like that, but it would run. But this one wouldn't even make a pop. So I did check compression. The compression was fine. That top end's actually pretty good. And I checked to make sure there was some fuel in there. And then literally pulled the spark plug and uh, put some fuel right in the combustion chamber and in the carburetor to see if I can get it to pop. Nothing. And put a different ignition on there really quick just to see if I could make it pop and still nothing. I mean, it was just nothing. Not even a little bit. So now you start going, wow. Either it's one massive leak, which is possible, or the flywheel is spun or something like that. So I popped the flywheel and it wasn't spun. The ignition I put on there made good spark and still nothing. Well, of course, the only thing left there is a massive leak, like a hole in the case or something like that, just a big leak. That was the seal. There's the bearing. You're looking right at the balls. So I would say that was a massive leak. All right, test to see if the seal driver worked. I put the oil pump back in so it plugs up the bottom end. Let's see if we can get this to run. Spray some brake clean at that seal, so I think let me put my tools away, but I think we have a running saw here. I guess this little operation worked. So now I have a seal driver for these 575s and 576s. It doesn't have great compression, but it has some compression. Put a little bit of gas in there. And put that spark plug right back in there. And see if we have a saw. We have a saw. There's your problem. So my hunch is if we take this apart, 
assuming the top end has a little life left in it, and then seal up that bottom end. We have a saw here. That is literally loose. All right, let's crank on these damn things and see if this thing magically comes back to life. My hunch is though we're not going to be able to be anywhere near that lucky.